Fast food is a horror story in itself. If you order it, it rarely comes out fresh or correct. If you work in fast food, some customers are an absolute nightmare. But if you want something positively horrifying, it's working the closing shift at a fast food joint. Because that's when the creeps come out of the woodwork. Human creeps, dead creeps, inhuman creeps, you name it. Today I've got some allegedly true and terrifying stories about working in fast food during the closing shift or night shift. Enjoy, and be sure to send me your scary stories at darkstories.org so I can narrate them. Also, check out eeriecast.com for more creepy shows. Now, let's begin. Trash Duty from Anomalous Working the closing shift at a Popeye's isn't the hardest thing to do. By 9pm, most customers are gone and few come in, leaving us employees an hour of open time to get things ready to close. We were always at our happiest to leave at closing time if we could help it. Luck usually wasn't in my favor, though. I was the newest member of the crew back then, and as such was given dish duty for my first few months. I hated it. It always took me half an hour longer to finish my shift compared to the other employees, and that's if they were working after closing. Plus, I always came home wet from the ribcage down, random bits of soggy, rancid food scraps on my uniform. Once the dishes were done, I'd also have to take the trash to the dumpster. Another duty assigned to me. Lucky me. After that, though, I'd be able to call it a night. After clocking out and saying goodnight to the manager, I joined my girlfriend in the parking lot. We only had one car at the time, and she'd have to come pick me up after work. We're married now and have better jobs, but back then, it was rough. Something happened one night in 2015 that I'll never forget, and it makes me extremely thankful that I no longer work at that Popeye's. Thank God I never had to go back. In fact, that place is no longer a Popeye's. It closed down a few years after this happened. But to describe the setting, the restaurant sat next to the most frequented road in our small town. During the day, it had tons of traffic, but at night, it was dead as could be. That's a small town for you. The most that came through after dark were truckers or out-of-state tourists driving through the night to our relatives. That's probably what made exiting the building to take out the trash every night so suspenseful. The dumpster wasn't too far from the building, sure. It sat just out of range of the drive through covered by wooden fencing so that the big green and stinky receptacle wouldn't be an eyesore to customers. Just beyond the dumpster was a large hardware store, and beyond that was woods. You'd think it wouldn't be so creepy. The hardware store's parking lot was always well lit, as was the main road behind me as I took out the trash, but once you open up that wooden fencing to get to the dumpster, things never felt right. It was cramped, a putrid smell clouded around that was so thick it stuck to your clothing and the fencing was just tall enough to blot out the lights from every direction. It wasn't even a quick errand, either. Usually, I'd have to roll two large bins to the dumpster, each filled with four to six disgusting bags of trash and rotting food that often spilled out as you lifted them. Each of these bags had to be lifted out one at a time. There were times I swear I'd hear something moving around in there as I tossed those bags into the dumpster, like something scurrying about. I tried to convince myself it was a rat, but I'd seen and heard rats at that dumpster before. Their little clawing sounds were that of a lightweight rodent, but this sound in particular was like I'd startled something much larger and forced it to stay quiet until I was gone. Raccoons, I'd tell myself, or possums, whichever idea helped me keep my head on my shoulders to make it through the night. I wasn't the only one that heard those noises either. The other employees had told stories of the dumpster being haunted, 
Yeah, you heard that right. A haunted dumpster. How a dumpster specifically can be haunted, I have no idea. But upon hearing those noises long enough, any 20-something young guy might come to believe it. This made my nightly trek to the dumpster an event. One of terror and hurriedness. I like to believe that my nerves were on edge, simply because I was about to be able to clock out and finally head home. But I knew something was wrong back there. At the back of my mind, I knew all of this was going to lead to something happening. But I didn't know when, and I hoped to all heavens that it wouldn't happen to me. It did. It was a cold January night. A bit of black ice remained on the asphalt about town, forcing every outside trek to be one of caution and hesitance. As the trash piled up throughout the day, my co-workers refused to take out any of the bins. I knew my trash duty that night would be precarious too. By 9pm, my peers were starting their nightly cleanup duties and I was able to start on the mountainous mound of dishes early in the back room. Yet, more and more dishes would arrive to replace the ones I cleaned, so it seemed I wasn't making any progress until after 10pm, when my coworkers began to clock out. By 10.40pm, the dishes were done. I was soaked to my very bones, and all that remained to be done was the trash, the only people left in the building by then, as usual, were my manager and I. The manager couldn't leave until the rest of us were gone, or ready to go, and the cash in the till was completely accounted for. It was nice to not have to be entirely alone, I guess. But she wasn't very much of a talkative person after closing. Probably wanted to get home as much as I did. So I began to herd the bins outside the back door. That was the process. Gather them all up outside first, then escort them across the short way to the dumpster. I was thankful the roads were empty as I slipped over black ice about three times, getting just two bins over to the dumpster. I scraped my left elbow pretty bad. It was an irritating night soon to get worse. I hadn't even begun lifting the latch to the gate to the fencing around the dumpster before I heard it. The scuffling sound. A heavy but dampened sound of an animal walking around the dumpster. Immediately, I visualized something about the size of a Malamute. Something with weight and deliberateness to it. Unlike the quick and often aimless scamper of raccoons or possums following the scent of food and decay. Whatever it was, it hadn't heard me yet. The footsteps continued, slowly circling the dumpster. I assumed this thing had jumped the fence and was in search of food, dropped around the edges. This was a frequent occurrence, unfortunately. Some customers decided not to use the trash cans provided on the outside of the store, and would drive up and attempt to toss their food and trash over the fencing and into the dumpster. Keep in mind, the dumpster lids were closed much of the day, so they didn't know or didn't care that their food would just land and slide off the dumpster surface. I swallowed down a bit of trepidation, and I lifted the latch. The instant I did, the footsteps stopped. The thing didn't scurry away or hide or anything like that. The sounds just stopped, as if waiting I slowly opened the fencing and peered around the edge of it, left and right, nothing strange just inside the front of the dumpster. That was enough for me. I threw open the left lid of the dumpster and started tossing trash inside. One bag, two bags, three, four, five bags. The first bin was empty. I rotated the bins and started on the second. One bag, two bags. But then, as I lifted the third out of the bin and turned back to the dumpster to throw it in, I gasped and dropped the trash bag. Something had jumped from the back of the dumpster into the open side. 
I couldn't breathe for a moment. I had to remind myself to take in air. When I finally did, I nearly choked. Did I really just see that? If something jumped into the dumpster, that meant it was right in front of me. Nothing but a rusty dumpster wall between us. My mind raced and I somehow convinced myself I'd simply been seeing things. But I had to be sure. I decided I would quietly and quickly take a look over the edge of the dumpster just to see what was inside. One step forward and I stood as close to the dumpster as I could. On my toes, I stretched my neck over. Slowly, I peeked inside. First, I saw typical food and mold and miscellaneous trash scattered about the back wall. I kept stretching further, my vision making its way to the front wall. Soon, I could make out something with jet black fur, soaked as I was, and it was breathing slowly. The movement of its breaths was extremely subtle. I couldn't even hear it, and at the time, I couldn't be sure if it wasn't just some hobo covering himself in a throw. Just a bit more, I stretched over, revealing more of what I hoped was anything than what it turned out to be. But the moment my sight revealed more of it, a face burst forth from the rubbish towards me, something elongated and animalistic, flat teeth at the front, and eyes that gleamed yellow from the faint light that leaked through the one opening in the fence. A squeal filled the air. A mix of my own scream and the cry of this thing that had burst forth from the dumpster reverberated around me. I fell to the ground as this jet black mass the size of a large dog with extremely short legs and long thin strands of fur sticking out of its back like needles leapt over me, landing clumsily to my side between the fencing and the dumpster. The thing was more than half my size. I continued screaming as I picked myself up. The creature made a mad dash at me as I slammed the fence opening shut and locked the latch. It clawed at the wood for a moment before scurrying around to the back. I watched the fencing, listening to it move around. Mistakenly, I assumed the creature was locked inside now. I failed to realize that it had been visiting this dumpster for a while, with no need for the gate to be open. When I heard a wet thump of that thing falling to the ground after crawling over the fence, my heart felt as if it imploded. It was no longer locked inside, and the sound of its footsteps circling around the fence meant it was coming my way. I jumped from the curb onto the asphalt that lined the drive through but as I mentioned before, patches of black ice covered the asphalt all around. My run broke down into a sliding fall as I awkwardly struggled to bring myself to my feet again. Tears fell from my eyes as I gained no ground. Then, flat but powerful teeth gripped into my shoe just missing my flesh. I struggled harder throwing an arm at the half-full bin next to me. Finally, I was able to pick myself up, but the bin fell from my weight as the last two remaining trash bags fell to the ground out of it. I ran to the back door, looking back only for a moment once I'd made it inside, just before closing the door completely. All I saw was one of the full trash bags being pulled around the fence and needle-like hairs disappearing around the corner. Running for my manager, I was able to stutter out an explanation. Something attacked me, I said, showing her the tear in my black, non-slip shoes. She went outside to investigate with a flashlight. Found nothing. She came back in and told me to be careful of scavenging animals next time. She explained that possums and the like can be dangerous if they feel cornered. It was then that I wanted to say it was obviously no possum, but I caught myself. Because I knew I'd sound insane and unbelievable if I explained everything in detail. Taking a deep breath, I simply told her that the trash still wasn't done, but I was going home anyway. 
She wrote me up for not finishing my closing duties, but I clocked out just the same and waited in the dark lobby for my girlfriend to arrive with the car. The idea of going outside again terrified me. My girlfriend was late, having just gotten off of a closing shift herself. She, I was comfortable telling everything to. When I got in the car and explained, she believed me, especially having shown her my shoe. We circled around the dumpster through the parking lot in the back, trying to catch a glimpse of something or anything, but all that remained was spilled trash. Not long after that, I got two more write-ups for failing to complete my closing tasks in a timely manner, and I was therefore fired. I'd never failed to complete anything until that incident. I guess the manager didn't like that I begged other co-workers to at least help me with the trash, but no one would take me up on the offer. That's fine. I don't miss it there. You can call me crazy, but I have no idea what I saw back there. I sincerely hope it was some deformed or mangy dog, desperate for the food left over from the trash I brought out every night. Otherwise, I've got no idea what else it could be without delving into theories that border on irrational. But after what I saw, would thinking that I encountered some sort of monster really be anything less than rational? Please let me know if I'm crazy. Have you ever seen anything like this yourself? I can't get over what happened, and never having closure to this situation has been really stressful to me. If you have any theories... I'm open to hearing them. Creepy McDonald's Night Shift from Kevin Eleven I was young and fresh out of high school. I needed work, so I sent in resumes to all sort of entry-level positions. I got a few responses. I settled on McDonald's because it was an easy commute. Plus, the employee discount was pretty cool. The only position they had was a night shift, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. I'm fine with that because I was already a night owl. The first few days working there were fine. I wasn't working the counter or anything, just doing back-end stuff and cleanup. Our building was in a little strip mall off a highway exit. It's the only place there that's open at night, but we get a decent amount of customers, most of which go through the drive through on the Friday of my second week working there, or maybe it was a really early Saturday morning at that point, I'm not sure. It was just late. I remember I was grabbing the stacked trays from the lobby when someone walked in through the doors. It was a woman. She was really tall and pretty, made up super fancy in a long dress with high heels. She was wearing a big hat too. Eccentric, not your average McDonald's customer but what was weird was that I never saw a car pull up. We have a full view of the parking lot from the window, but no car ever dropped her off. She must have walked here. I smiled at her as I walked by and headed behind the counter. I bent down to restack the trays below, expecting my coworker standing at the register to serve her. He didn't say anything, though, and after I'd finished, I stood up to find out why the girl wasn't ordering anything. But she wasn't there when I looked up. I never heard the door open. She was just gone. I asked the guy on the till where the girl went, and he replied, Who? I said the girl with the hat, and he just looked at me like I was dumb, telling me he had no clue who I was talking about. So I tried to rationalize it, deciding she had probably stepped in the door, took a look at our grubby menu, and left. But something was weird about the whole thing. It didn't really make sense why someone who looked and dressed like that would be at a random McDonald's in the middle of the night. Whatever. The shift went on normally for the next hour. Then I remember taking a break after cleaning the toilets. I sat down on a chair in the back near the kitchen when I heard heels clicking on the floor. It was quite audible, louder than if someone was just walking. It sounded like stomping, sort of, so I peer out into the lobby. My coworker was gone from the front. 
I figured he went to take his break. But you know who I do see? That same woman. Only this time someone was with her. A man. He wore a tuxedo with fancy black shoes. They were dancing together, like full-on ballroom dancing in the lobby. Swinging back and forth, it was the most bizarre thing I'd ever seen. I remember watching them for a bit, mesmerized, before I took my place behind the register. I said something along the lines of, uh, can I help you? They both looked at me at the same time. As they stared, I felt a hand grab my shoulder with a firm grip. Instinctually, I turned around. No one was there. I knew someone had touched me, but there wasn't anyone, so I spun back to the lobby where the people were, to find them both gone. The man and the woman had just vanished. Once again, I didn't hear doors open or close. I didn't hear their fancy shoes skid on the floor. They were just there one minute and gone the next. For the rest of the night, only a few small things happened. At one point, I walked by the washrooms on my way to do something, to find both doors swinging, the male and female ones, like someone had just crashed through both of them. A little while later, I remember looking for something on the shelves in the back near the employee entrance, and something banged on the door, hard. Something heavy hit it, and only once. I remember opening it, looking around, and seeing no one. After that, the shift was regular. Really not much to say. I was really happy when I finally got off, though. The first bits of sunlight had just begun to come over the horizon as I left for my car. I was punching out ten minutes before I was supposed to, but I didn't think the people coming in would care. As I hit the parking lot, though, I see a car. It looked like a small limousine. It was just sitting there in front of the restaurant. Through the light from the street lamp, I could make out the doors opening. Two people got out, one on each side of the car. It was the man and the woman I'd seen before. The same people that were dancing. Only their appearance had changed. Their clothes seemed torn and ragged. I could see the woman's dress clearly because it was white. It was covered in dirt with holes and tears. And their faces... Their faces were terrifying, their skin was bleach white, and their eyes, which were previously normal, were this beady black, like oversized bugs were looking at me. I stood there, frozen as I looked at them. Then the man spoke in a deep, filtered voice that seemed to echo from all around me. Would you like a ride? We have room for one more. Shaking my head was all I could muster. Without another word, the two people, if you can call them that, got into their car, shut the doors, and pulled away. None of their lights were on. I watched wide-eyed as the limo drove down the road before disappearing into the darkness of the early morning. I can never look at McDonald's the same way again. From Aardvark Sketches I'm from India, and I'd recently moved to the UK for my undergraduate studies. The college life seemed to thrill me, and along with it came the ultimate decision of a part-time job. I preferred the library, and being an avid reader myself, I embraced the thought of sitting in a warm, cozy desk huddled next to a fire. But as fate had it, the job applications were closed the minute they opened, as the librarian would not be resigning after all. Following endless hours of moping around, mourning over my short-lived glory, my roommate handed me a brochure stating a new job opening for a part-time worker at a local McDonald's. I furrowed my brows. How far is it? I questioned to her, to which she replied. It's a two-minute walk down Pembroke Street, then take a left. 
A few months later, I'd started getting used to the job, and I was able to differentiate between the customers that were frequent and those that rarely showed themselves around here. We had the usual crazies and Karens, but nothing I couldn't handle. Although the thing I met yesterday made these guys seem like whining toddlers. I was completing my usual shift at around 9pm as this car rolled in. There was nothing weird about the car itself. The couple inside were lovely and ordered two Big Macs, chicken nuggets, and some french fries. While I put their order together, I noticed a man standing near the trees away from the outlet. Odd, I thought. Many people usually avoid that area, as it gave off some creepy vibes, with tall spindle-like trees and the resounding of howls from wolves. I looked back towards my packaging containers and packed the remaining items, brushing any leftovers into the trash can. Turning towards the couple, I noticed that the man in the distance has now gone, almost as if he had vanished into thin air. Paying no heed, thinking that he probably went to take a leak, I handed the couple their package. I slid my hatch down out of habit, locking it, only to look through the window to receive a heart attack. Attached to the back of their car was the man. It was almost as if he had glued himself to it. I probably shouldn't refer to this creature as him at this point. It was crouched in a grotesque position, turning its head ever so slightly to see me staring at it, awestruck. The next thing that happened caught me off guard. The creature leapt off the car and onto my window pane as I screamed, tumbling into the empty fry container. It smiled a sinister smile. No human should be able to smile like that. It opened its mouth wide as saliva dripped down from its rotting teeth. I stood there, shivering and whimpering for what seemed like forever. The creature then emitted a shrill screech and bound off into the trees. I quickly grabbed my car keys and ran to my car, not wanting to be there any longer. Needless to say, I've never been to a McDonald's since then. Domino's Scare from Anonymous This happened a few months ago as of writing this. For some context, if we have any mess-up pizzas at the store or orders that never got picked up, we'd give them to homeless people if they popped in. There was one particular homeless man who everyone knew and we were all friendly with. Let's call him James. I was about an hour into my 5 to 10 shift when he popped in for some pizza. We didn't have anything to give him at the moment, so he just said thanks and walked out. After that, everything was going fine until about 9.30. We heard the bell, signifying that the door had opened. I looked at the man who walked in and my stomach dropped. It was James, but something was wrong. He was bent over slightly, clutching his stomach. I walked over to the counter to ask if he was alright when I saw a dark red stain on his shirt. One of the other employees, I'll call Mike, rushed over to him and helped him sit down on the bench. For context, Mike was training to become an EMT. Mike began to check on him, asking him all sorts of questions. James pulled back his hand to reveal a slit in his shirt, as well as a small bleeding puncture wound. Mike went to the back office to get the first aid kit and began to patch James up. As he was being taken care of, James told us what happened. Apparently, he had been walking around close to our little strip mall when three men mugged him. He fought back, and in return, they stabbed him with what looked like a nail. After they took everything of value he had, they laughed. He stumbled over to our dominoes in hopes that he would get some help. We called an ambulance, and they took him to the hospital to check up on him. I couldn't stop thinking about what happened for the rest of my shift. After I clocked out at around 11, I was walking out to my car when I had the strangest feeling of being watched. I got to my car when I felt it again, as if someone was watching my every move. I did a quick 360 without seeing anyone, then I did another just to be sure. That's when I saw them, a group of three people in the middle of the parking lot, all in dark clothing. They weren't under a lamp, so I couldn't tell what they looked like, except for the fact that all three were staring right at me. We looked at each other for what seemed like forever, 
when I finally broke eye contact and got in my car. As soon as I closed the door, I locked the doors and turned on the engine. I glanced back in their direction one last time, and what I saw made me drive home at least ten over the whole way. They were gone, not a trace of them being there in the first place. I didn't understand how in the three seconds I wasn't looking they could have crossed the parking lot to hide behind anything. There weren't any other cars near where they were. After I got home, it took me a while to fall asleep. That's only part of it. The scary thing is that just recently one of our drivers has started noticing that she was being followed by someone. The way she described it, whenever she would see them it was always one person. But this would rotate between three tall men in dark clothing. Her tires were slashed just yesterday, and it scares me to think that the people who stabbed our homeless friend might now be stalking our drivers. <laughs>